Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a really nice equation with complex numbers. We have i times e to the power i theta equals 1 and what are we going to solve for? There is no z, there is no A plus BI, there is nothing to solve for, right? Is that what you're thinking? No, not really. Actually, theta is the unknown here. We're going to be solving for theta. That's the only thing we can solve for because i is a constant, right? And I'll be presenting more than one method. And let's start with the first method, which I kind of find somewhat interesting, okay? I just thought about it when I kind of opened up the document. Anyways, so this problem should look somewhat familiar to you. You know why? Because of Euler's formula. So did you recognize this part, e to the power i theta? Yes? Okay, great. So I'm going to call that a function of theta. f of theta equals e to the power i theta. Do you know why I do that? Because I'm about to do something to this function so that I can get the given expression on the left-hand side. Did you get that? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and differentiate f with respect to theta. So in other words, this is going to be df over d theta. And by the way, theta is the only variable, so you don't have to write it that way. You could just write f prime at theta. It will be the same thing. But when we have more than one variable, sometimes you want to specify. And usually when we have a multi-variable uh, function, we need to kind of use the partial derivatives. But in this case, the only single variable is theta. So if you differentiate e to the i theta, what are you going to get? You should be getting e to the i theta because e to the power something is all, the derivative of e to the power something is always the same thing. Multiply by the derivative of the inside from the chain rule. In this case, that's the exponent i theta. i is a constant. It's kind of like 5 theta or you can think of it as 5x if it's easier for you. But the derivative of i theta would just be i. You see what I did? I got the original expression. So this is i times e to the i theta. Was this really necessary? I know some of you are questioning at this point. I know that. I can feel it. But guess what? It's just fun and we're doing it for fun. Okay, nothing rigorous. So now, okay, so I got this. So what? Right? Uh, this is equal to 1. Great. So what does that mean? So the derivative of f is 1. So can I find f from there? Does that mean f is theta? Okay, don't worry about that. We're going to do it uh, in a nicer way. So first of all, I do know that the derivative of f contains, notice that it contains e to the power i theta. And I actually know what f of theta is because I can just turn this into, like I can write it using Euler's formula. I can write this as cosine theta plus i sine theta. Make sense? And then we can differentiate this too because it should give us the same thing, right? Exactly, because they're equivalent. So let's go ahead and differentiate it then. How do you differentiate this with respect to theta? Same thing, right? The derivative of cosine theta is going to be negative sine theta. Awesome. And the derivative of sine is cosine, but with the constant i, it's just going to be i cosine theta. Beautiful. Now, this is f prime, right? And this is also f prime, which means these two things are equal. And if those two things are equal, then this is also equal to 1. Cool. That's the result I'm getting, negative sine theta plus i cosine theta. I hope this was clear. If not, please ask questions in the comment section down below. We'll be more than happy to answer them. So this is my equation now. Uh, I got rid of the i, and obviously I'm going to show you an alternative method. Don't worry. We're going to do at least two methods. Okay? So what do you do next? Well, there's a couple of things you can do here. If you want to take the longer route, you can kind of turn this into a cosine theta plus i sine theta form. How do you do that? First of all, you can start by multiplying both sides by negative 1. I mean, you don't have to do it that way, but I kind of like doing it that way. And then look at this expression. I'd like to have something like cosine alpha plus i sine alpha because uh, obviously we're not going to stick with theta. It's going to change. But... Now, I don't have that. 
how can I switch these around? First of all, notice that actually multiplying by negative one was probably not a good idea. I'm thinking right now, so back up a little bit. And here's what I want to do. I want to actually write this as sine of negative theta. And then I want to write this as cosine of negative theta. Because cosine is even, it can absorb the negative and sine has to spit it out. Okay. Now, what do you do with this? Now you do the sine cosine conversion, the co function identity. What is that? Well, if you have a sine of alpha, I guess I'm going to get rid of this because it's going to kind of interfere. But if you have like, let's say sine of alpha, you can write it as cosine of pi over two minus alpha because these two angles are complementary. Then we have this identity. Make sense? Like 30 degrees and uh, 60 degrees like that. So in other words, if I want to change the name from sine to cosine, all I have to do is subtract this angle from pi over two, but the double minus sine will give us a plus sign. And the same thing goes for cosine, sine, sine, cosine. And then we got this and this is equal to one. Beautiful. Now you can apply the identity of Euler's uh, and what does it say? Cosine alpha plus I sine alpha is e to the i alpha. So this is equivalent to e to the i times alpha, which is pi over two plus theta. And for one, I can just write it as e to the power i times two pi and i, because that's what one is, right? In the complex world, oops, I wrote i twice, which kind of uh, defeats the purpose. Yes, i times two pi n. So n is an integer, so this is a multiple of two pi. It's all good, right? Now take a look, i cancels out, leaving us with something like this, pi over two plus theta is equal to two pi n. And my goal was to solve for theta and I got it negative pi over two plus two pi n. Again, n is an integer and we have infinitely many solutions. Make sense? And you can leave it at negative pi over two because it's between negative pi and pi. So that will be good for our purposes. Now, at this point, you don't really have to go like this far there's actually a better approach, but I don't show you that first, right? Sorry about that. That's my habit. Like, and students sometimes they really got mad at me because I'm like, why did you torture us with the longer method? Because you would not appreciate the shortcut, right? That's what I usually told them. Okay, great. Anyways, so we have this equation and I'm thinking one is a complex number. How do you write it as a complex number? One plus zero I. And we have this property that the real parts have to equal real parts. So this is one. This is zero. What does that tell you? This tells you sine theta is equal to negative one and cosine theta is zero. Now I'm thinking about my unit circle and my unit circle knowledge kind of tells me that, okay, we are here. <laughs> you know how you have those things at the shopping malls, like you are here, okay. And then you try to find your way out, but it's usually very hard. So we're talking about uh, what? Three pi over two or negative pi over two, depending on how you look at it. I'm going to go the negative route because that's what we did with the first method. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.